So a very warm welcome to the first episode of our new podcast, Thermal Transfer Ribbons. My name is Pim Fett. I'm going to be the co-host of this uh, podcast, uh, which means co-host that implies that there's another uh, host. Luckily, yeah. Case. Yeah, my name is Kees, Kees van der Kolk. Welcome. I'm product manager within DP, DMP for TTR. Maybe to start, uh, that's a good one. Uh, just, just tell me a little bit more about Kees. What is it you do? What is it you like in life? Uh, I have a wife and one son. He's 10 years and I'm really proud of him. Uh, I work uh, within, within DMP for two years now mm-hmm. as a product manager, tech, uh, product commercial and technical product man- management. Uh, before that, I've worked within a company it's called Talco. It is called uh, KPN. Yeah. I also worked here on the on the other side of the road here, mm-hmm. and um, I've worked there for 25 years. First in the sales, and then in marketing, and then as a product manager. And I was working in the for um, for the business uh, for companies. Uh, Today we're going to focus on one uh, really big question. Um, it sounds like a, a simple one. How and 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 uh, how do I go- uh, get a good print result? That is actually the the, the question we're going to answer today. Yes. Um, well, tell me. Well, it's um, there are there are several steps to get a good uh, print result. But first, to do that, we have to define what is good. Yeah. And uh, actually, as everything. Good is in the eye of the beholder, so right. the, the customer defines what is good or what is not good. So uh, he says, for example, I want just want to have a print, or I don't want to have some durability, mm-hmm. or uh, I want um, that it lasts for um, uh, for a few years, or, or just it's only needed for for a small period. So it depends on the application the customer wants to use Mm -hmm. and and the circumstances in which the application is used and then you can define what is a good print. So the customer actually determines what the the quality of the print is. That ought to be the the thing, yes, that's correct. But it's not always the case. It's not always like that. No. Um, What would you say that makes, what is the holy grail? What, What makes a good print result? Uh, well, there are actually three things or four things that are really important. Yeah. The first is, of course, what I said, the application yeah. and what, what is required for the application. You, you need a good uh, uh, substrate on where you print on. You need a good printer mm-hmm. to print on. And what's the quality of the printer and what sort of printer is there and what sort of ribbon are you using? So that's yeah. a combination. And you have to find that combination in order to get the, 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 the print results you acquire for your application. Yeah. And let's talk uh, some about the requirements, some demands of the customer. Um, what kind of requirements do they usually have, your customers? Yeah, it depends. It's it's wide area of, 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 of requirements. So, so, for example, I can say uh, a logistic label. Mm-hmm. A logistic label, uh, is they use it for a time, lifetime of, uh, say, two days till six or eight weeks. Right. Yeah, that's, that's normal uh, when, when you work in logistics. Yeah, two days for, for when you want to send something uh, from uh, uh, in the country from one place to another place to a customer. And uh, when you have something on a boat, it takes more time. It takes two or three months. So that's the, the, the lifetime span. Um, there's not much durability required. Maybe some abrasion. Abrasion is the, the way you, 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 you can wrap the, yeah. the print of the, of the, of the substrate. Uh, it's mostly done on, on vellum, on paper, mm-hmm. and uh, it's not. They won't, don't want to spend lots of money on it. It has to be a, a cheap solution, actually. As usual. As usual. No, no. Yes, as usual. F, F, well, it's a balance uh, between cost. And, it's and always and a balance between cost and, and quality, but that's for logistics. Yeah. And when you look, for example, for an automotive um, um, uh, lay, uh, ribbon of print, well, you see that the lifetime is, is much longer. It's about 8 to 15 years, probably, yeah. because they print something on an EQ and, uh, and, or on a windscreen or whatever. And it's there, and it has to last for a few years or for 10 years. And that's a, the durability is much more important, but also the, the durability is... And the demands are different in the sort of materials that come uh, in contact with the, with the print. So, for mm-hmm. example, uh, you have some acid or you have some uh, solvents or you have uh, oils, all kinds of materials where it has to be durable against. 
Yeah. Um, what kind of if if you what is important to consider the the type of label material? The type of label con- uh, the type of label con- material is actually in the same. Um, it it works in the same. For example, a, a paper is for for short. A short period, mm-hmm. but if you you can have some economic uh, synthetics like polyethylene or polypropylene or PET, PET, mm-hmm. uh, that's uh, for more uh, more durable solutions, but not really harsh conditions. But you also have materials uh, with coated, that's um, coated or are varnished, which are really developed for harsh surroundings, yeah. say heavy industries or oil industry, and that then you have need materials that are even stronger. And to, to deliver the the condition the, yeah. the the durability you, you want you need more durability yeah, yeah so it's actually it's a combination of the of the ribbon and the, and the substrate which defines the, the durability and the sort of application that, that can be solved so no client or product is the same with you guys. No, it's always different. It's always different. Yes, so it's a very broad um, area of, uh, of of scale of different products you, yeah. that you that you can use and where you can print on. Depending on a lot of factors. And depending on a lot of factors, and yeah. to give an idea, I think if when you look at applications, there are about uh, hundreds and hundreds of maybe thousands of applications. And when you look at uh, f- different. Uh, uh, businesses say uh, automotive, uh, aerospace, uh, logistics, pharmaceutical, uh, healthcare. Uh, well, you can co- continue uh, articulture. So they all have their own demands, mm-hmm. and that's one. So we have a lot of applications, and then we have the vendors of the of the substrates. They all produce their own materials. Yeah, and uh, also applicable to all the different applications that are uh, defined in the in the sectors yeah. and that can be uh, a different substrate but it can also be a different uh, uh, coating or varnish on top of it yeah. so th- you have always have to find what it's um, yeah what, what what's needed actually so th- we have a lot of different materials and for example the um, the number of synthetics are approximately around 40. There are 40 different s- synthetics. And then you have all kind of, within the synth- that, that synthetic, you have also that the synthetic is not always the same. The s- when you have here, you have paper and you have their yeah. paper, the yeah. paper is different. But yeah. well, that's also with polyethylene or polypropylene. It's not always the same, it's always different. And it's more in the in the roughness of the material that there you see the biggest differences. Mm-hmm. And then you have to look at what kind of durability is acquired. So. Mm-hmm. It gives a lot of um, variables to yeah. find a good solution. Yeah. Is that an answer to your question? I, it totally answer, uh, answers my question. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, um, I'm starting to learn uh, because of this conversation that you have so many different clients. Every, it's, 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 the Dutch word is maatwerk. Yeah. And I have no clue what it is in English, but it's, every client is different. You Tell me. It's tailor-made, Dave. Yeah, Thank you tailor-made. very much. I was looking for that word. It's tailor-made. That's what your business is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Actually, it is. Yeah. And not always our customers and the end users not always realize that. No. N- now they do. That's why we're here, <laughs> yes, right? That's correct. that's correct. Let's talk about printers. I have yeah. a printer at home. Yep. It is a printer of maybe 40 euros. Uh, yeah, I regret b- buying it because it's it's not the best printer. Okay. Um, I think you work with different printers. Um, how does a printer affect a good print? Yeah, uh, in your line. Yeah, of in our no, line. Not in my home. In, in, in TTR, we have uh, two types of two types of printer. Actually, we, what we, well, the one is what we call flat head, and the other is what we call near edge. Right. And it's uh, they are all they both built for a different purpose. A flat head is built to get a more uh, in general. This is in general. It's not always the case, but in general, it's built to get. Uh, long-lasting good prints. Yeah. Uh, more durability. Right. A near-edge printer is built to to get more speed. Right. So this, uh, you have a, you need a high output. You look for a near-edge printer. Yeah. That's that's more of. Durability more du- is less of a problem then. Yes. In general. Not in general. I in know, general. I know. And uh, another thing, what is the difference? What you see, uh, we have in the prints are used. Or after the production process or they are 
integrated in the production process. And when they are integrated in the production process, the production process is leading in terms of speed. The, 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 the packages come out of the machines and at the same time the print has to be made in the same speed. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you see is that when it's in a production process, the speed is more um, demanding, uh, the, the, the speed of the production process is demanding of the speed of the printer. So you can't say, I, I tweak on the, on the speed and I make it a little bit more slow or a little bit quicker to get a good result. It, it's most of the time the speed is, is um, demanding uh, for the quality, uh, in, in is leading, is leading yeah. for to making the print. Right. And that's why a near edge printer has uh, most of the time a higher energy to make a print. So the impulse of the heat is much bigger so that it will um, uh, print uh, quicker. Right. Actually, that's what it happens. So that's what that's why we say when you have a flathead printer or you have a near edge printer, you can't say I use the same label material or the same uh, 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 ribbon no. to get the same result because it, it gives a complete other result. Well, let's talk about ribbon. Yeah. Um, that is the last factor remaining. Uh, how does that affect the printing results? The, the, the ribbon, choice of ribbon. Yeah, the choice of the ribbon. Well, actually, um, what, what, what I said is that, uh, 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 a short recap. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of different substrates. We have a lot of different applications. We have different printers. So all the durability, so that makes a large, um, um, a big um, number, a large number of different solutions. Right. So we have to solve that with, with a TTR ribbon. And how did we do that? Well, we split it in three, actually. First, we say we have some simple uh, uh, ribbons. They are based on wax, and they are ribbons which uh, don't offer a lot of durability, but they offer... Uh, um, uh, uh, a good print mm -hmm. and it lasts for a quite short period of time. That's what we call a wax resin or a wax ribbon. Sorry. The next step is that we say we have that, but we also send, um, put some extra durability in it, and that's the more synthetic, uh, uh, economic synthetics we print on, and um, we also um, have some uh, durability against uh, 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 solvents like IPA. Uh, yeah, mostly of that sort of this. Uh, there the are solvents that are used for cleaning. This is not that very hard, harsh solvents. That's, and then we are talking about the wax resin. Mm -hmm. What you will see is that then the speed goes a little bit down already. Yeah, a wax resin goes very fast. And, and the last step is that we go to a resin, and the resin offers uh, is 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 applicable for prints that are really durable and they are really, uh, uh, they are good opposed uh, harsh uh, solvents like uh, MAC or, uh, or let's think, uh, MAC, uh, uh, well, oils also with a large, large, uh, large, you know what large is? Large? Large, yeah. I know what large is big, but it's yeah, not no, what you no, mean. It's, 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 it's more like a fat from an animal. Ah, lard. Lard. Yeah, lard, yeah, yeah. Lard, lard, sorry, yeah, yeah. Lard, sorry, yeah, lard. yeah. Lard, and uh, well, that's all, that's different for, for, for a printer to, mm -hmm. to, to handle, and uh, uh, or, or for, for abrasion, that, that, that it comes off easily when you use that on a material. And then we have developed resins. Yeah. And the, um, they are much stronger, and but they need more, power, uh, more energy to print on. Uh, to, to get it printed on, on, the, on the substrate. So also there are the demands on the substrates are, are, are much more. Mm -hmm. You ask more from that. And um, so you see that we have divided it in three. And for to give you an example, for wax we have only uh, say about five different products mm -hmm. in our portfolio. When you look at the wax resin, it's about 10 to 12, 13. And when you look at the wax, or about the resins, then you see there's 25. So you see that there's a much more we have lots more resins in order to offer the, the good solutions for the customer. Right. So, um, in short, uh, what is the golden formula uh, for a great print? That's why I'm here for yes, uh, to do. Yes, yes. Well, actually, there is not one golden formula. No. But we can't say. That, uh, I have to look now because right. I had a no right worries. sentence. Uh, let me have a look. What did I say? Well, I, th I think we have the um, application. Yeah. Uh, the sort of label material. Yeah. 
the sort of ribbon, of course. Yes, yes. yes. And then the printer setup. Th those yeah. four yes. elements are, are together make the golden formula. I yes, think. that's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you can't say there is one ribbon that prints on everything. No. And it's the one if you you ask for speed. You uh, you there will be a lack of durability and yeah. the other way around. So yeah, I think we could s conclude almost with that. Tailor made is the the key word or well, the key phrase here. Yes, I think it is. You always have to find a good solution. Yeah. Yes. Um, how does all this work uh, in in daily operations? Yeah. Well, that's the point. Uh, uh, it's a good question. Um, no, that's what, what is the point. Eh? When you look at a, at a daily basis of a customer, what, what 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 do they do? They have they get some material and they want to print on it. And the first thing they do is they look whether they have had that product already, that they know something that, that they can print on, or they just do try what, with some ribbons they have already, and they do some uh, yeah, trial and error to find a good combination, and then they start printing. Mm -hmm. What not always is the good answer to uh, the good solution to do I think it's better to, to, to ask uh, for example us the, uh, whether we can help you or the customer with finding the good solution so we say send them some material we have the ribbons and say us what kind of demands do you have for durability or for, 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 uh, for the application uh, and then we can do testing and we can give you an advice based on our experience and all the materials we have, and then we can give a good solution. I think that is the best thing mm -hmm. what you can do. Well, guys, we did good. That was the first one. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, next time we'll go into, the second one, we'll go into depth a little bit more about the different types of thermal uh, uh, transfer ribbons, and I thank you again for listening, and if you want to know more, and of course you do want to know more about thermal transfer ribbons, please go to our website, eu.dmpribbons.com. And otherwise you could also check the description section, and I sign off by thanking you again for listening. Until the next one.